Well, Rick, uh, it's nice to see you again. Yeah, thank you. How have you been since we last met? Pretty good. Good. Yeah, it's keeping busy. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Um, how's your health doing? Uh, no, it's not well. It depends on the day. I'm sorry to hear that. That's but, but you know, well, that's why we're here, right? We're trying to find solutions to these problems. So, hope we can help you out today. Um, as you know, last time we met to talk about kind of you know the general situation, um, kind of your objectives, and the facts about the whole vacation property that you had in the mind, how it was affecting and so forth. And now we're here today in what's called a counseling session to um, basically or essentially find um, some courses of action for you to find, to to pursue so you can like find a solution to this problem. Um, now, just as some background information, I want you to know that um, the attorney-client privilege still remains. In other words, everything we talk about is confidential, it's safe between us, so please be open and we can talk about anything. Um, this meeting will last uh, 45 minutes or less, um, so I won't take too much of your time. And um, as I said earlier, the purpose of this meeting is to um, find these courses of action. Um, I'm going to present some options to you, some legal options, some non-legal options, as to how to remedy this problem, and then at the end, we're going to help you, know, you find a solution so you can move forward with that. Now, um, before we begin, though, is there anything that you, that you brought with you um, to this meeting uh, beyond the documents that we've already received from you? Okay, great. And I want to thank you actually for providing the hospital record, the medical records, and the deeds of the house. That was very helpful in our full, and full analysis. Yeah, of course. Appreciate that. Now, um, before we begin, I want to ask you just a few follow up questions as to what we talked about last time, just so that we can give a more accurate um, uh, representation of what the courses of action should be. So, first of all, I know you gave us the medical records. Um, I, I was wondering are there any other records that you have that could have been? Indicated that your COPD worsened, like after you returned to your home, um, following those five years that you were, you know, back in Southern California. For example, the report you had this time was from, from, from 2015, and and it said the doctor's recommendation about, you know, how you shouldn't go to high pollution areas and things like that. But are there any records that show that directly stating that like condition worsened because of the dust? There may be. Okay. Um, I don't know for sure. Okay. I mean, I'd have to talk to my doctor and see what types of records I've kept. Over okay. Years. Great. But great. Well, maybe that's some new homework now. Then, if, if you could find that, that'd be awesome because that'd be very helpful in improving some important things later down the line. If you choose to take, for example, like a legal um, course of action, for example. Um, second, uh, we understand from that letter you sent us that you met with your neighbors to discuss all the issues that you were having. Um, do you remember how many neighbors got together in that meeting that you had for them? Uh, specifically, no. Okay. Uh, I can't recall. Exactly. Okay. That's fine. Do you, is, do you have like, was it like a, maybe like 10 or 15 people? I was yeah, it was a good number of us. Okay. And I didn't like count. Right, right. Anybody, but. That would be weird. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. But you think a, a decent amount of people. Yeah, we had to. Stay far with you. Oh, well, thanks for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. <laughs> so, okay, well, let's get to know. So, you had a good, good amount of people there. Now, um, so, so with that in mind, do you, would you be able to give an approximation of how many people you think have been disturbed or affected by the mine? I don't know how many people like live in the area mm -hmm. aside from like my close okay. neighbors. But you do know people who have definitely shared the same concerns. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, definitely. Good to know. Now, lastly, we understood that you logged a verbal complaint with Mountain High Mining, um, and they didn't respond to you at first, unfortunately. Um, and now, I know you said that earlier. I was, I was just wondering, in the time that's lapsed since then, have you heard? Have you heard back yet? I've not heard back. Still, anything. okay, okay. Now, that's unfortunate. I wish they would be more responsive. But once again, that's why we're trying to find the best solutions to figure out this problem and hold them accountable. Right. So now, I wanted to summarize kind of what we talked about last time to make sure that I understand everything very clearly and without any errors. And feel free to you know, jump in as we're, and as we're brainstorming and figuring out you know, the facts exactly how they are. So um, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, you bought your home in uh, 2004, the vacation home, and then uh, you visited each summer after that until 2009, is that right? Yeah. Okay. And then in that same year, you were um, that's when you were diagnosed with COPD, and uh, which caused you to stay away from your home for about five years, is that correct? And um, according to the doctor's report, the initial cause of the COPD, in his opinion, had to do with your 
like 20 years of having that smoking habit. Is that right? Okay. And, and don't worry, there's no no judgment here. Yeah, that's. It, it's just important to know that for the for the purpose of future elements they might have to prove and showing whether this caused it and this and that. But but that that's important information. And thank you for sharing. Um, the mine uh, then was reactivated in 2009 with uh, the state of California's approval, and uh, it's been active ever since. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, fortunately, we know that your COPD improved. Um, over the course of five years, it's a, it's a great thing. And uh, after it got good enough, you returned home in 2014, right, in the spring. Yeah. And uh, and that was the first time you had been there in, in five years, correct? Right? Now, when you got back there in 2014, was that the first time that you noticed that the mine had been reactivated? Yes. Okay. And then that's when you start to notice its effects on your health, right, the property. And from that, we uh, gathering the information we had. I've deduced that the three major effects that you've had, or that you saw, was that there were, number one, high dust levels that made it hard to breathe and just go about your daily life. Number two, that there was the damage to the river that went through the back part of the home. Um, it made it unusable, it made it polluted, the mineral deposits, all that. And then lastly, the last major effect was that it had a negative impact on the nearby wildlife, meaning you know, it pushed away animals and wildlife and just made it unenjoyable to live in. Is that correct? Kind yeah. of you just spot on. Okay. So that's a fair summary of kind of the gist of what happened. Okay, good. So with that in mind, with, with that factual scenario, um, there are definitely legal options that, that I found um, that are designed to either completely stop the the harm or the mining operation. And there are other options that could limit it, and other options that are non-legal that could also try to find a middle ground solution to leave you and the mine um, relatively happy. So we're going to go through each of those sure. and kind of figure out what the best course of action is for you. Now, before we delve into the the, the nitty gritty of the legal stuff, which may be boring, but I promise I'll try to make it fun. I wanted to re to refine and clarify the objectives that you had going forward, because in the end, I mean, we want you to accomplish your goals, right? And that's the thing to keep in mind as you're deciding what option to pick. So, based on our first meeting, I remember your first objective was that. Um, you would like to essentially slow down or or just stop and stop entirely the mining operation so that you can just enjoy your property right in peace and comfort that you can enjoy the nature the the serenity of the environment and just not have those negative impacts on your health is that correct is that kind of your primary objective primarily i just want to be able to I'll honestly i just want to be able to enjoy my property because i know i want to be able to go there and not feel like I'm gonna, <laughs> I don't know, like not get stressed out and frustrated going to this place that's supposed to be a respite. Yeah. Um, as far as necessarily like getting the mind to shut down, I don't know if that's necessarily my primary objective, mm -hmm. right? Because I mean, I can see both sides of the coin here. The mine there, it's bringing a lot of healthy economy and growth to the area. Yep. Right. I see that. I get that. I don't want to screw that up. But at the same time, you know, there are people like me, me and neighbors, other people that are being negatively affected. Our you know, property values being affected. Our health is being affected. Our enjoyment is being affected. Like all these kind of things. So, yes and no to the yeah. question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Th th thanks for sharing. That's a good clarification. I think oftentimes you have, and I've seen it where people come in and they're just so angry about about, about a problem they can't see both sides of the coin, right? And they, and they kind of have this tunnel vision. But I, I really I appreciate that you're sensitive to not only your own situation, but you're trying to find a solution that's kind of um, beneficial to a lot of people. Right? Yeah, if at all possible. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So to clarify. Your your goal is to enjoy your property and to have it enjoy it peacefully and without interference. But at the same time, you don't want to destroy the mine, shut it down, because you value its impact on the economy. All well, primarily, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, there's pros and cons. Sure. Either sure. way. Right? Exactly. Okay. But yeah. Great. That's a fair assumption. Yeah. And then, um, uh, and with that first objective in mind, is your second objective, or I mean, intent? I'm not to say one's more than the other, but to protect the environment and kind of hold Mountain High accountable for the impact it's had negatively on the environment? Definitely. Okay, great. 
So with those objectives in mind, um, has any new information surfaced since our last meeting that has made you either maybe develop another objective or kind of change around something that we didn't mention here? Or? No, other than, you know, like I was saying just now with kind of having a, a when I initially came in here, obviously I was that guy. I was a little bit peeved about the whole sure, situation. Sure, that's understandable. I kind of had that tunnel vision, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I'm just one person, yeah. you know, in this whole, and I know why it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, expect, yeah, don't, I don't expect it to be. I agree. But I, you know, that's just really the only thing that has changed, per se, is mm -hmm. that um, I've realized that there are other people involved here as well, you know, and my selfish motives aren't the only thing that matter. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, okay. In other words, and when you talk about other people involved, are you referring to people like the mine, the employees yeah, of the mine versus- the employees of the mine, I'm talking about all my- you Your know, neighbors. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. I mean, I'm sure some of my neighbors, you know, at least in, in the town, you know, they're, yeah. Supporting their family, feeding their kids from working in the spine, doing, doing their job. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I get that. Okay. Great. So I guess my last follow-up to that would be, would your ideal situation be to find a, a solution or a course of action that that kind of um, can accomplish your objective of of having your, your enjoyment of the property while while minimizing as much as possible of course the impact on the mine? Is that kind of the middle ground solution you'd, you'd be seeking? Yeah, I think maybe more even my primary objective here is hold them accountable for the impacts they're having on the environment and okay. the area. Okay. Which in turn helps accomplish my other objective of being sure. able to enjoy my property. Yeah. Right? Okay. Great. Thank you. Now, as I see it, um, with these objectives in mind, we have a few legal solutions and a few non-legal solutions that I want to present to you today. Okay. Now, in light of your objectives and how, how you frame them now, some um, may definitely be less appealing than others. So as you're going, and you can even, if you want, you can even take notes. You're not required to, but as you hear stuff, if you want to you know, bring some whether you like, you know, a given claim or not, you can kind of rate it for yourself or just go along. There's about five of them that we're going to go through. Cool. So first, um, the first legal action, cause of action that we have here that I've found is known as what's called a private nuisance. Now this cause of action, um, have you heard of it before, uh, a private nuisance? Not really, no. No worries. I didn't get into it until I So a private nuisance under California law requires someone to show that there was some type of interference with their property and that that interference was substantial, quote unquote, and that it was um, unreasonable. In this situation, a lot of things can constitute an interference with property. You know, the high dust levels, mineral deposits and pollution to the water, things like that would easily satisfy as an interference. So you definitely would satisfy that. Um, the question of whether the interference or the injury is substantial, that, that's something that's a little more difficult in this situation. Um, courts have said that in order for an interference to be substantial, it must um, affect like the average person and injure the average person in a certain way. And it doesn't really consider the unique characteristics, characteristics of a given person. So in this situation, and you kind of mentioned this earlier, the fact that you have COPD and as, as bad as it is and as bad as, you know, I think uh, you should be, you know, uh, I, I think treated um, differently because it definitely hurts you worse. The law doesn't seem to recognize that yeah. because it looks at it in general terms, you know, as, as how the average person would be hurt. So in this case, the effect of the dust on your CO2 analysis, unfortunately. Um, and lastly, the whole idea of whether it's an unreasonable interference, that all hinges on whether the impact on you, whether the injury on you, outweighs the social benefit of the act. And in this case, and you mentioned it as well, the benefits on the economy, jobs and all that, we think that it's, it's unlikely that, you know, the harm to one person and without even considering your health harms, would outweigh you know, right. the big impact on the economy. And um, and once again, I, I'm not telling you what decision you should take. We're just trying to take an objective approach and understand the best ways of succeeding. And that's what we've kind of deduced that 
you would have, if you were to pick this option, roughly like a 55% chance of success. Okay. So it's not the best odds. You know, it's kind of like more likely than not. Um, and it's for those reasons, you know. Right. Who we just mentioned. So that is that is that kind of clear? Yeah. This one. Okay. So, so that's the private nuisance act action. Um, in the same vein, some pros and cons of this action are that you know if you were to succeed, um, you could halt the mining operations. Um, we know that's not something that you desire, so that actually may be a con in a way. But you would be able to enjoy your property if that were to happen. Um, furthermore, uh, and we know you're not concerned with financial reward as much. But if you were to prevail on this claim, you could get some um, financial uh, compensation for the, you know, the damages that's happening. However, some cons, and these I think weigh pretty heavily as well, are that um, the your health condition can't be considered in the analysis, and halting the operation would would hurt your reputation, um, which which I know that it is valuable, and it would most likely hurt the local economy. Yeah, you know, and we know that kind of goes against some of your objectives. So I wanted, you, I wanted you to be aware of that, you know, so the pros and cons, um, if you were to succeed, go through with this cause of action. Does it, do you have any questions about this so far? No. Okay. So once again, best case scenario is that you win, stop the mine, enjoy your property, but that kind of goes against that objective, you know. And the worst case scenario is that you lose, and then lose the money invested in litigation, it's costly, and that's obviously not a great scenario. But, but yeah, so that's kind of where we are on that cause of action. The next one is, is very similar. It's called a public nuisance. And the difference is probably what you're already thinking. Instead of a nuisance affecting one person, it just has to affect a considerable number of people. Um, now we know we talked about how, you know, you had some neighbors who've been affected. We don't know the exact number, you know, but you said it was a good amount of people um, in your community. And if we can show that a good amount of people have been um, injured or damaged by this, that it was substantial, as we talked about previously, and that it was unreasonable, then we could prevail on this claim. Now the whole issue of considering your health and how that can't be considered, that isn't actually an issue in this case, because we know that the average person, you could argue, is substantially affected in this case, because we're looking at a lot of people versus one person like yourself who has you know, a unique disease they're afflicted with. So in this case, you feel like there's a good chance that you could prevail um, in showing all three of those elements, actually. In fact, no, don't worry about it. I just broke your pen. Don't worry about it, sorry. It was only 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it for free. Um, so, so yeah, so with, th with this in mind, um, we concluded that you have roughly a 75% chance of succeeding on this one because um, in e each of those elements, we think has a de decent chance of being satisfied. So I know I've got some neighbors like that. We've talked a little bit. And sure. Are there a few people that I know already that are um, interested in, you know, if it gets to that, you know, suing with me? Oh, are they? Yeah. Um, and I, I know in that case, like, you know, we were all wondering, like, if you'd be able to represent all of us or anything like that. Yeah, and, and in fact, um, that, 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 you know, as well as me in the situation that. Sure, sure. So, no, yeah, it totally does. And, you know, I'm glad you've done that, that extra research already to kind of figure out if other people have been harmed. That, that saves us some time here. And with regard to representing a lot of people, um, that is possible. Our firm, um, we don't always do, because this could be known as like a class action type suit maybe, you know, but there is actually a way where they could be a part of this, but you could actually be the sole plaintiff in this case. Because it's not like you guys are seeking like to get money and all these things. You guys are just trying to enjoy your property, right? And, and there's actually law that says that one person, a private person, such as yourself, can bring a public nuisance action if the injury they suffer is different in kind, not merely in degree, from the injury that other people are suffering from. In other words, if your neighbors are being bothered by the dust, if it's affecting who knows what on the property, or if the river, the rivers on their part is being affected and whatnot, if that injury is happening and you're suffering from a different injury, which in this case you are, I mean, nobody else that we know has a COPD, that would mean that your injury is different in kind, and therefore um, you yourself can bring an action on behalf of not only you, but this community of people. So um, they could receive the same benefit from it um, without having to go through the, the whole process of me representing a whole bunch of people. You yourself can be that plaintiff bringing this public nuisance action on behalf of you and all these, all these individuals. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that something that you um, would be open to? Should, should you decide to follow this course of action? It, yeah, I mean, if that I mean, if it increases any chance of success, obviously, but at the same time, like, if it's possible for, you know, Joe and Shannon across the street, you know, to help. I guess what I'm wondering, I have no idea how sure, this works, but like, yeah. if they sue with me, mm -hmm. would you representing both of us, like how does that work like financially or as far as the yeah, it's no, no, yeah, I no, no, yeah, it works. So this is no, no, you're fine, you're fine, you're <laughs> fine. And you know that that might be an issue. I mean, if you so the problem with representing multiple people is that at, at times there's what's known as there could be um, what's known as a conflict, like a conflict of interest of some okay. sort. In other words, um, if they're seeking something, some type of, I mean, we're just assuming, assuming everyone wants the same thing. It wouldn't be an issue, but that's often not the case. People have different ideas of what they want out of a lawsuit and what they want in compensation. You don't want money, other people may want money, who knows? And the fact that there are these competing goals and interests, that does sometimes pose a conflict because if I'm trying to do my best job to represent you, um, and your solution may go against the solution they're advocating, that puts me in a difficult situation. Yes. And, and you know, doing the best job to represent you and my other client is no good. But that's not an issue if we just stick with a public nuisance action. Through you. Through me. Exactly. Because in that sense, you're representing all their interests in the same way that, you know, because you'd be advocating, you know, trying to, you know, stop the mine, or not stop the mine, but, you know, trying to um, limit it, restrict it, get it to reform itself and, you know, be accountable. While, while allowing you guys to enjoy your property more. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah, no, no problem. So yeah, and that's why we believe you have a pretty good, ch a better chance than the other one, a 75% chance actually of succeeding on this. Um, some of the pros are that you're not, you're not allowed to stop the mining operation with this cause of action. You're only allowed to, at most, halt it or restrict it. In other words, hold it accountable and help it to maybe change its way of affecting the environment. Um, now another, um, however, a con in the situation though is that you do have to obtain information from your neighbors and you do have to show that this really is causing harm to more than just you. Yeah. And, and I mean, that, that is difficult, but, um, but it can be done. It just takes more work. It will require, it will require you and me to meet with these people, get a hold of them and see, you know, how many, how many and what's been, what's been happening, how they've been hurt, right? You know, things like that. So those are the, um, those are kind of the pros and cons in a nutshell, and uh, that's kind of why this this cause of action, objectively, um, is a better chance than private. Right. You know? Lastly, we have a third legal act, cause of action known as trespass. Um, I'm sure you've heard that term before. Typically, it's about you know someone either walking on someone's property when they're not allowed to be there, but it's a lot broader than that actually. Um, in the legal sense, uh, for trespass to be a successful claim. Um, in the particular in this situation, all you have to show is that the defendant or the mining operation engaged in reckless or negligent behavior that involved an unreasonable risk of invading the property. And courts have said that, for example, things like particulate matter, like dust, particles, gas, that could constitute a trespass. You know, in this case, we know the high levels of dust affect your health and damage the river mineral deposits, and um, those are examples of things that could be an interference. You know, so that's one element that we feel like you could succeed on. Um, beyond that, you must show that you know there was just this unlawful interference, which once again um, could be shown. For these reasons, we feel like you know in your situation, you could definitely have a, a, between a 60 and 60, 65 percent chance of prevailing um, on this claim. Now, the problem, however, and these go to the pros and cons and kind of the best and worst scenario thing is that the best scenario is that you win but you can only get monetary damages, you know, for past and present damage, which, which could be good, but um, that wouldn't really reach your primary objective of limiting the mining operation, holding them accountable, and um, 
trying to give a bigger solution to this problem. You know, it's just money. That's the thing. So, um, and once again, the, the con is it's expensive, time consuming, and so forth. But but yeah. So with regard to trespass, um, do you have any questions on on that and how that would work? Kind of um, pros and cons of that. Is that just more of a like lengthy legal process? Well, yeah, so the length, I mean, it could be just as long or more or less for all these different claims because they all have the same type of process um, of, uh, you know, filing a complaint initially, meaning, you know, if you decide to do public nuisance, for example, I would then draft up a document, a complaint where we allege all the facts, the law, and why we think you should be, you know, why you should get your solutions. And then we file that with the court, and then we serve or deliver that complaint to the mind, the defendant, then they have 21 days to respond, and then from then it just goes back and forth with getting evidence, and uh, all the way up until trial, presumably, unless things change and there's some type of settlement or things like that. You know, would there be any way for you to like call John Rivers, the CEO of the company, like set up a meeting? Yeah. Any way to like resolve this? Yeah. I don't know. Like ultimately, um, I don't want to end up spending a fortune. Sure. This sure. right. Yeah. Yeah. There are pros and cons, things that I, I would like, definitely protect the environment for the future, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't want to spend exorbitant amounts of money yeah. to maybe or maybe not, yeah. you know, uh, um, increase, re-increase, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, the, the, the property values on this, on this property when I could Take a bit of a loss now and just sell the place. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean ultimately there's a bigger picture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not just me. There's environmental damage happening, but at the same time, you know, I won't spend years and hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of dollars on something that may or may not make any difference when I could just yeah. So yeah. Yeah. No, I agree, and that and that's always a risk though, with litigation. You're right. It's, it's stressful, time consuming, um, and yeah, it, it could take a long time. So, in, in fact, I, I like I like your suggestion because that was actually um, one of my non-legal solutions that I was going to bring to you. Um, that to avoid this the headache of litigation and the risk of not succeeding, um, and that uh, I would like to help you. I mean, if you if this is an option you choose to do, in in arranging a meeting with Mount High's executives to help them develop. Um, for example, uh, environmental conservation plan. You know, so for example, as a large employer, um, we know that Mountain High Mining certainly has an interest in maintaining a positive reputation in the community. Um, so, meeting with aggrieved stakeholders in the community, such as you and the neighbors that you know, the people that have been affected by this, meeting with them would would certainly incentivize them to foster eco-friendly solutions um, to the situation, whether that's finding a way to prevent the mineral deposits from entering the rivers or limiting how they release the dust, maybe finding a way to contain things like that, you know, eco-friendly solutions um, without their, them suffering negative publicity of legal battle, you know, yeah. that's a consideration of them. They have to spend money too to defend the lawsuit. So the incentives are there on both sides. I do agree. Um, Is there any percentage of a chance of success with something like that? And that's and that's something that's uh, that's a great question. Um, we we have we've assigned percentages to the um, the legal courses of action in our in terms of our experience dealing with these cases and our knowledge of the law, past precedent, mm -hmm. um, and just you know general likelihood of success is easier when it's a defined legal and there's elements and the facts are there to be applied. Um, in this situation where um, you know, these more creative solutions, it's difficult to to predict. Um, chance of success, but I, I mean, I guess speaking just personally, um, I believe that people are generally prone to just finding solutions and talking things out. You know, people don't like to spend money and fight and get in litigation. People are scared when they hear the word lawsuit. People get scared or bothered, but they don't want to avoid it. So I would certainly um, think that you have at least a sixty um, between sixty and seventy percent chance. Of seeing as something like this, um, we know that Mount High hasn't been responsive in the past. But um, if I were to contact them, we're going to raise something. 
or both of us were to contact them or draft a letter, something with more authority and sig signify to them that you know, yeah, this, this isn't just this it. random guy <laughs> calling it, right? That it's a community who's agreed, and then you have some legal backing. Even that threat um, that hey, this could be a bigger problem if we don't meet, you know, and try to find some middle ground. I think that could be it. Could be definitely um, successful. You know? Once again, there are things out of our control. They could ignore us. They haven't responded to your letter. Yeah. Your complaints, unfortunately. But then again, maybe they just need some more pressure. Right? So, so those are kind of the pros and cons of that. And even if you were to get a meeting, one con that I, I feel like I should tell you though is that if you were to get them to do an agreement, there would be no um, like legal backing to it or like a court judgment which would force them to do it. In other words, um, it's kind of like a he said, she said, they might do it, it, might not. Yeah, I mean, you could get an agreement, but it would be hard to enforce if they were if they were to not right. keep it. Yeah. But I mean, who knows? I mean, with their reputation on the line and their desire to keep good faith between you, maybe they won't be as big of an issue. You know? Yeah. So those are kind of the pros and cons of that non-legal solution. You know, and like I said, those are kind of the odds I think of succeeding based on the facts we know now. Um, along with that, another non-legal solution I thought of was um, was you and your community, you and your neighbors, trying to petition the zoning committee of the city or the city council, whoever is involved with the zoning laws to um, rezone the area as something, um, for example, as something that's solely residential. Does that make sense to you? Are you familiar with how zoning laws work in cities? Yeah, a little bit, okay. not a lot. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, long story short, zoning laws determine certain zones in the city in which certain properties can or can't be built. You know, whether it's, this is a place where only homes can be built, or this is where, you know, only corporate buildings, businesses can be built. That's kind of how zoning laws work, they designate areas. Now, if, if you and your neighbors, if this coalition of people, this, these citizens could go to this committee, um, and I can help you, of course, draft a letter, prepare different things to, to present to that committee, then um, we could certainly try to petition them to, to redesignate this area you know, as something that would um, limit it perhaps to, to homes. Maybe it'd make the mine um, have to relocate, and that could be a con, you know, considering your um, desire to not disrupt the local economy, right? Yeah. But 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 that is an option, right? Uh, of going there, and it would allow you to, if you're successful, uh, avoid the cost of litigation and um, enjoy your property as well as help your neighbors enjoy. Your but once again, that con, um, yeah, I'm not that, already, that con I'm is not there. A yeah, huge fan of that yeah. option. No, and that's great, and that's the purpose of all this to present you with options and help you ultimately decide what's best for you and your interests. And that's kind of one of the pros and cons help. So, no, thanks for being honest. That's great. So, you know, with that in mind, what what, what are you thinking? I mean, after hearing these, what, what stands out to you? What, what option, or is there any option that you think would satisfy most of your objectives or all of your objectives? Um, I mean, Going back to the public nuisance action, sure. okay. that one obviously, from what you told me, has the highest percentage rate of chance of success. Yes. Um, talk to me a little bit about how expensive and lengthy a process that could potentially be. Sure. I mean, I know you mentioned like the trespass claim would be relatively expensive, mm -hmm. you know, just because it's going to most likely get dragged out. But you know, just applying the same metrics there to yeah. public nuisance action. Um, so with, with the public nuisance action, and, and it's the same with uh, trespass and private nuisance, and I, I didn't mean to single out trespass, but I should have mentioned earlier that that the, the whole notion that it's expensive and time consuming, that 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 is a concern that with, just comes with, with, with the territory, yeah, with, with any action. Exactly, with any legal action, yeah. Um, some do drag out more, um, and in a case where it's easier to show that you meet the elements, um, which we deemed would probably be more likely in a public nuisance, it might be faster, there might be less dispute, there might be less um, back and forth because it's kind of hard, it may be hard to kind of, you know, show that, you know, one side is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's a consideration and, you know, the higher the odds of success, I would, I would presume that the, the, the quicker it'd be, but there's no way to know for sure. It's, it's a, I think it's a pretty good presumption to just expect litigation to not be cheap, 
and to take some time and to, you know, of course, be sort of a burden kind of hanging over your head like this legal battle. Yeah. So that is a consideration. Once again, we, we do believe that your um, the fact here, assuming that your neighbors, you know, have been affected adversely, that the fact you lend itself to, you know, pretty good chance of success, 75% or so. But once again, um, you know, yeah, be, be mindful of that, right. of the litigation costs, of course. So based on what you're saying, it looks like, I mean, out of all the legal ones, public nuisance at least has that's not like a, it has some favorability, but not too much. It's yeah. not more of a draw to me yeah, than sure. you know the other yeah. litigation options. Just sure, because sure. you know private nuisance doesn't make any sense for me to try to do this all on my own if I get other people and you know kind of that uh, group mentality there. Yep. Um, trespass. I mean, I I get it. It makes sense, but. I just, I just think as far as what you've explained to me about the nuisance claim, it makes more sense to try that if we go the route of yes. That if we go the route of litigation, as far as any of the other options so far, I mean, you know, um, trying to non-legally yeah. work with Mountain High and their executives, put in the place some sort of environmental conservation program, like you were saying. Yeah. Um, that primarily, I, I know you said it's harder to legally enforce, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, to me so far, again, I have no idea of like sure. how to really proceed, but from what we discussed, what I'm thinking my objectives are, that makes a lot of sense to me as far as a course of action to at least try to pursue off the bat. Yeah. Relatively less expensive. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't <laughs> want, you know, bad faith or bad reputation or negative impacts sure. on the economy. They're already screwing the environment enough that I don't want to like <laughs> jack things up even more. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. So that just seems to fit my vision of what I want here. Yeah. Don't want to spend a ton of money. I do want to get this resolved. If that doesn't look like it's going to work at all, maybe pursue later down the line. Later, yeah. you know, something like a public nuisance action claim, yeah. or just sell the property and yeah. get it out of my hair. Okay. Okay. No, and that's great. And uh, you know, I, I can see that you're being thoughtful about this. And and yeah, um, meeting with Mountain High executives, um, it, it definitely would it would satisfy your objectives, right? Hold them accountable. To um, you know, protect the environment, to not spend a lot of money. So yeah, it, it does seem to touch kind of what you're saying. So I mean, as of right now in this meeting, because based on our, oh, sorry, we have limited time. Is that kind of is that at this point in time? Yeah. Kind of trying to meet with the executives and get that non-legal option going. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Glad we reached a decision, right? Yeah. Cool. For real. So, okay, well, now I want to, we only have a few minutes left, but I wanted to um, kind of talk about what we should do moving forward to kind of get the ball rolling here, okay? So, once again, this is some homework. It's not a lot, though. So, I want you to, um, first off, contact your neighbors, to see who else has been affected, because we're trying to get this coalition, right, of aggrieved community members, because it's a lot more force and a lot more pressure on them if it's more than just you, right? Uh, I want you to talk to those people, go to the people that, you're, that were at that meeting that, that we found out about and see, um, you know, how, if they'd be willing to go to a meeting with you to maybe share their experiences, um, help us draft a letter perhaps, um, and I'll you know, go in person like I said. And then once you've contacted them, um, please call me, let me know what you found out, what you learned about it, and then we can begin arrangements to get to set up that meeting. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, my part of the deal will be to contact Mountain High um, and arrange a meeting. And um, and then I can go with you to the meeting unless you prefer otherwise. Right, great. You know, if we yeah. set it up and it kind of gives a, a bigger bigger force and a bigger voice to to hold them accountable and to just find some common ground solutions. And we're not trying to like you said, we're not trying to you know, paint them out of the bag, but we're trying to just show like, hey, if you want to 
be here, you know, we got to be able, be able to co uh, cohabitate, right? Coexist together. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So that'll be our homework moving forward. And uh, and yeah, I'm glad that you've uh, you're able to find a, a solution. Do you feel you feel good about it? Do you feel like it addresses your objectives? Yeah, I do. Okay. Great. Well, um, we'll set up a, an arranger in a few weeks to kind of um, touch base after you've done this homework and I've done mine, and uh, then we'll plan our next meeting. How does that sound? That's good to me. All right, Rick. Is there anything else I can do for you? No. Okay. Very helpful. All right. Appreciate your work. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming. Of course. You should probably do that. <laughs> no